one of the um, kinds of institution building that happened in when Canada was a fairly new country was the creation of institutions for people who were deemed, quote, mentally ill. Um, and these were established in all parts of Canada in the late 19th century. Um, and they were primarily state funded, although there were some private madhouses, as they were called. And these madhouses were considered worthy public institutions, and you can see that in the grand institutional architecture of um, the early, uh, what is now KMH, um, the early institutions in Montreal and, um, and in, in British Columbia at Riverview, still used today as a, um, as a movie set. There are lots of ways to interpret early mental health institutions. You can inter th interpret them um, as what they were called, as asylums, so as places of refuge for people who, uh, who were suffering from emotional distress. Or you can interpret them, as many historians do, as institutions of social control, places to put misfits, places to put um, women who gave birth out of wedlock, um, as places of, of um, implicit or explicit punishment and a way of policing deviant, so-called deviant behavior in society. Um, and what do I think? I think that they were all those things. Um, and we don't have long stay mental hospitals in our society today. Um, these were primarily downsized, shut down in the period from 1950 onwards in, at different pace in different parts of the country. And what we now have today is community mental health or as some people who use the system have told me, what we have today is the failure of community mental health. So we use mental health institutions differently as short stay um, care for people um, who are deemed to have mental health uh, difficulties.